Hello, my name is Marilyn Madigan. I'm the national president of the Lady St. Genera of Hibernians. And I'm very privileged and honored today to present the story of the Nuns of the Battlefield Monument. The driving force behind the creation of this monument was Ellen Ryan Jolly. Jolly was an individual who loved history. She was our national president and one of the first officers that she held was Irish historian. The American Irish Historical Society recognized her knowledge of Irish and Irish history with an article published in the journal that she wrote on the Irish element in American history. The Irish were making a contribution to our country. One group that made a significant contribution was the religious sisters, mostly of Irish birth or descent, that served as nurses during the American Civil War. In 1898, George Barton wrote the book, Angels of the Battlefield. This was the first book on the contributions of the sisters of the American Civil War. In the book, an army chaplain is quoted, the sisters do not have any reunions or campfires to keep alive the memories of the most bloody battles in our history. But their war stories are as heroic and as far more edifying than many of the veterans. His goal was to present a modest picture of the grand work done by the Sisters for Humanity. He concludes the book introduction with the words, the chivalrous men wearing both the blue and the gray who caused America manhood and valor to be known and respected the world over have on many occasions and in various ways given esteem and affection in which they hold the women who devoted their lives to the care of the sick and the wounded. The ranks of the war sisters have been gradually thinned out by death until a handful of them remain. These survivors rest in their convent homes, tranquility awaiting the final summons to a land where conflict is unknown. They may die, but the story of their patriotic and humane work will live as long as love or loyalty regard for duty and admiration for self-sacrifice exist in the heart of the American people. Ellen Ryan Jolly did not want this story of the sisters to be to die, but to be memorized in a monument recognizing their service. She was the national president of the Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians from 1912 to 1916. The order was only 20 years old when she proposed the lofty goal of building a monument to the nuns of the battlefield. At this time, I'd like to share a short video so you knew what the nuns were going through before and what they went through during the war. Boosted by the majestic forest, the convent and the academy at St. Mary of the Woods in 1860 would seem to have been too remote, too securely enclosed to hear the rumblings of the approaching national disturbance. Echoes of trouble, however, reached even to this secluded spot, where Sister Mary Thurston Mug, in her 1931 monograph of the Civil War, lest we forget the Sisters of Providence of St. Mary of the Woods and Civil War Service.
Turning to City Hospital in May 17, 1965, the sisters were in charge of domestic arrangements like brushing, cooking, and cleaning. Their services were not limited to these duties, as sisters' apartments also served. who served during the Civil War in Iraq. Sister St. Felix McKenna, Sister Helena Burns, Sister Frances A. Carter, Sister Athanasius Thurman. of the households, according to the government. So that short video shows you why Ellen Ryan Jolly wanted to do something. During the Civil War, the wounded and dying on both sides of the conflict were attended by sister nurses. This monument highlights the role of Catholics, particularly Irish Catholics, to American history. In 1914, Ellen Ryan Jolly, president of the Ladies Auxiliary of the Ancient Art of Hibernian, shared her idea with members of the Auxiliary to honor the sister nurses with the monument. For the next 10 years, the membership raised the funds to build and work to find a suitable location. Many obstacles were faced, but the courage and perseverance of one woman and her Hibernian organization resulted in this lasting tribute to the sister nurses. Representative Ambrose Kennedy of Rhode Island assisted in overcoming the obstacles. On March 29, 1918, a joint resolution of the House and Senate granted approval to the Ladies Auxiliary of the Engineer of Hibernians to erect a memorial to honor the various orders of sisters who nursed the Civil War wounded and attended to the dying. The monument was designed and sculptured by Jerome Connor, religious and civic leaders, as well as one of the sisters, Sister Magdalene O'Donnell, was present at the dedication on September 20th, 1924. Some of the challenges with the monument included the location. Jolly wanted the monument to be in Arlington Cemetery, which was not accepted by the government since no bodies were associated with it. Another challenge that Jolly needed was to provide the information on the sisters that served in the capacity as Civil War nurses. She did the research and provided it to the proper authorities. This information was the basis of her book, Nuns of the Battlefield, published in 1927. The location and sculpture were selected. The sculpture was Jerome Connor, an immigrant from County Kerry. He had a studio in Washington, DC, where the sisters came so that their habits would be depicted on the monument correctly. Connor sculptured the following, Bishop John Carroll, Robert Emmett, Brock's Victory Memorial and the Lusitania Peace Memorial. This monument was dedicated on September 20th. This was a special day in American Catholic history. At the time of the beginning of the Civil War, there was only 600 trained nurses. Unbelievable, all of them were Catholic nuns. This is one of the best secrets in our nation's history. The Daughters of Charity at that time were the most experienced nurses in the country, but the artillery shells fired from the cannons could do even more damage than the sisters could help. Was to help was from the Confederates in New Orleans. The Daughters of Charity were now technically serving in a foreign mission for the American Daughters of Charity were based in Emmitsburg, Maryland. 
To act positively on this request could be construed as taking sides in the growing tension between the Union and Confederate governments. That cre could create a problem for the Central House, which was located in the Union. To not act, though, meant men could die. Men whose bodies and souls the Daughters of Charity could save. And with this action, the Daughters of Charity took the first step that it would eventually lead to hundreds of sisters caring for tens of thousands of soldiers who became casualties of the Civil War. These Daughters of Charity were the first order, but they were far from the last. And the United States Register of the Treasury described that the Catholic sisters were the most efficient, veritable angels of mercy. Here are the 12 orders that are depicted on the monument. With the saying, they comforted the dying, they nursed the wounded, they carried hope to the imprisoned, they gave in his name a drink or water to the thirsty. The sisters that served were the Daughters of Charity, the Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati, Ohio, Nazareth, Kentucky, New York City, the Sisters of Dom St. Dominic from Memphis, Tennessee, Springfield, Illinois, and Springfield, Kentucky, the Sisters of the Holy Cross, Notre Dame, Indiana, the Sisters of Mercy from Baltimore, Chicago, Cincinnati, New York, Pittsburgh, and Vicksburg, Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy from Charleston, South Carolina, the Sisters of Our Lady of Mount Carmel from New Orleans, the Sisters of the Poor of St. Francis of Cincinnati, Ohio. The Sisters of the Providence of St. Mary, of which provided that short video. The Sisters of St. Joseph from Philadelphia in Wheeling, West Virginia. And the Sisters of St. Ursula in Texas. As you can see, the orders of the Sisters came from all areas of the United States at that time. Interesting, the first sisters that were operating on a boat and can be considered the first naval nurses were the Sisters of the Holy Cross. They served on the steamboat Red Rover on the Mississippi. And again, as I said, they are the sisters as the first, recognized as the first naval nurses in military history. In describing some of their work, Sister DeSales O'Neill remembered Mother Angelo assisting in surgery during the Civil War. It was a deliberate and difficult operation and the life of the soldier depended largely upon the accuracy of the surgeon whose head and that of Mother Angela on opposite sides were bent over the poor lad. Suddenly from above, a heavy liquid drop fell upon the white of Mother Angela, who, true to her Celtic strain, did not quiver. Another, and still another, drop after drop, came faster and faster. At last, the final stitch had been taken, and the two heads, that of the surgeon and of the sister, rose simultaneously, and not till then did the surgeon know that a stream of blood trickling through the open chinks of the upper floor had fallen steadily upon the devoted head of Mother Angela, who stood before the surgeon with head and face and soldiers and back bathed in the blood of some unknown soldier. In my career, I was a surgical nurse. So I know that the devotion of Mother Angela to assist one of her patients was outstanding. The Daughters of Charity with their central house in Emmitsburg, Maryland, is only 15 miles away from one of the worst battles in the Civil War, and that is of Gettysburg. On the way to Gettysburg, both the Union and Confederates were camped at their mother house. They treated both armies the same. From their mother house, 
they could hear the roar of cannons as the battle started. Immediately after the guns ceased, the nuns, along with their priest, Father Bolan, went in to Gettysburg to start their ministry of helping the wounded and the dying at the site of the battle. Here are some images depicting the sisters on a battlefield as well in the hospitals. In Gettysburg at St. Francis Church, there is a beautiful stained glass window remembering the work of these angels of mercy. They were there after the battlefield and for many months after. Another group seeing people being ministered on the battlefield. Burnside, one of the major generals, describes the nuns, in particular the Sisters of Mercy. Of the Sisters of Mercy, there is little need for me to speak. Their good deeds are written in the grateful hearts of thousands of our soldiers to whom they were ministering angels. Interesting enough, we did not have any trained nurses, but the surgeons recognized and the doctors recognized the contributions of the sisters. Many other women and even men volunteered to be nurses, but their services were not as readily acceptable to the medical staff and also the patients as the sisters were. Many a soldier requested sisters to be at their bedside as they were leaving this world. The sisters took entire charge of the sick soldiers and the surgeons in charge often told me that one sister was worth more to, to the sick than all attendants put together. From this time forward, I had frequent opportunities of judging of their efficiency and services. And I must say that they did more by their kindness, their gentleness and cheerful devotion, attention to restoring the sick and wounded and in their convalescence than all the minister, medicine and minister to them. Here is the Sisters of Charity at Center Lee Hospital in Philadelphia, one of the largest hospitals that ministered to the ill and wounded of the Civil War, the Daughters of Charity, and the Sisters of Mercy. Steve tributes of the nuns on the battlefield from both the President of the Union and the President of the Confederacy. President Abraham Lincoln describes them of all the forms of charity and benevolence seen in the crowded wards of the hospital, those of the Catholic sisters were among the most efficient as they went from cot to cot, distributing the medicines prescribed or administering the cooling, cooling strengthening daughters, draughts as directed, they were veritable angels of mercy. President Jefferson Davis describes them, I can never forget your kindness to the sick and wounded during our darkest days. And I know not now how to testify my gratitude and respect for every member of your noble order. As you can see, both presidents gave wonderful tributes to the nuns. And even on the local level, the nuns were freely able to cross lines for the most part because of the work they were provided. Unfortunately, at times, their habits were used by others to act as spies, but they were quickly brought out when they were questioned that they really were not the angels of mercy that the nuns were. Here are two of the sisters that did give service during the war. 
Sister Anne, Alex Soap of the Daughters of Charity, and Sister Tyler. Now, another thing that Ellen Ryan Jolly wanted to do is she wanted to recognize these sisters as veterans of the Civil War. And in her research, she had to provide to the Department of War where these sisters fought and where they died and where their final resting places were. Many of these monuments are still at cemeteries in Amherstburg, at the University of Notre Dame, at St. Mary's for these women. Now they served in many battles. Oops. There wasn't any state within the Union or the Confederacy that had a battle fought that these sisters were not present. This quote comes from World War I, but I think it does sum up the work and the final resting places of these sisters. Oh, golden isle set in the deep blue ocean with purple shadows fitting over thy crest. I kneel before thee in supreme devotion for those who on thy bosom lie at rest. Seldom they enter into song or story. Poets praise the soldiers' might and deeds of war, but few exalt the sisters and the glory of women dead beneath a distant star. No armies threaten in that lonely station. They fought, not shot nor shell, nor ruthless foe, but heat and hunger, sickness and privation, and winter's deadly chill. After the war, Father Berlin asked the sisters, the daughters of charity, to write down their memories. In their memories, they do not mention how they performed the work. They mentioned the soldiers and how they were suffering. And most importantly, in the eyes of the sisters is the number of souls that they were able to convert and baptize before they went to their heavenly homes. If you wanna find out more about the sisters, in my opinion, there is not enough out there. They deserve more than what we've given them as a society. In the civil war prior, there was anti-Catholicism. Many of these soldiers at first did not want the sisters to minister to them they witnessed how other soldiers reacted when the sisters provided them their care. They changed a lot of men's and society's views on Catholics. Unfortunately, that did not stay for long. And one of the reasons why Ellen Ryan Jolly wanted to recognize the sisters was that in the beginning of the last century, again, there was anti-Catholicism. And by her building this monument, it recognized the work of the sisters and again, proved to America that Catholics are loyal to their new country. And again, I wanna let you know that the monument to the nuns of the battlefield is one of the first monuments ever dedicated to women in our national capital. And for that, we have to thank one of our early leaders, President Ellen Ryan Jolly. We saw the movie Glory to recognize the work of the American Africans that participated. In my opinion, I would love for someone to have a movie made out to the contributions of these 12 orders of nuns. By the end of the war, there was over between 800 and 1,000 sisters that ministered. Unfortunately, some lost their life, 
and they lost their life due to the contagious diseases that were present in these hospitals and these prisons where they ministered. One of the sisters that lost her life was in Point Lookout in the state of Maryland. The soldiers revered her for her work and she received a military funeral. Where at the time, soldiers were being built, buried without caskets, but the soldiers built a casket and provided a military funeral for this nun. So these sisters were held in high regard. So I would recommend any of you, these books are readily available through your library, or you can purchase them on Amazon or at the Mother House at St. Mother's Seton in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Remarkable, the first one is the Soldiers of the Cross. The authoritative text, the heroism of Catholic chaplains and sisters in the American Civil War. This was done much later. It only came out about two years ago because someone searching through the archives at the University of Notre Dame saw a beginning of a book with the involvement of the Sisters of the Holy Cross, as well as the chaplain, one of the most famous chaplains of the American Civil War was Father Corby, who also was president of the university. I recommend this book highly to anyone. I also look as a nurse, I was interested in this book about a call to care of the women who built the Catholic health care in America. It was our Catholic sisters of a variety of religious orders that have built our hospital system in the United States. And sometimes they do not receive the credit that is due. Again, we have our own past national president, Ellen Ryan Jolly, who wrote The Nuns of the Battlefield. This book was originally published in 1927, and then our order reissued the book for our 100th anniversary in 1994. One of the sisters of, or the daughters of charity, Sister Betty Ann McNeil, is an expert on the role of the Daughters of Charity in the American Civil War. She has a Trinity, a Trilogy book um, called Charities of Fire, where she highlights Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. She also has a book, The Bombs of Hope of Charity. And this book is the letters of the sisters that wrote shortly after the war of their memories as directed by their chaplain. We also have an eyewitness account, Angels of Mercy. This is by Sister Ignatius Summer, and this deals with the Civil War, and more importantly, the yellow fever that happened in the 1870s and how the nuns ministered to that. This book is recently published, and I just finished it. It's an excellent book on the actual experiences of the nuns on the battlefields, in the hospitals, in the prisons, as well as their traveling between hospitals and the battlefields. And then again, we have women in the front, the hospital workers in the American Civil War. Thank you for listening to this. Please do not forget these women. If you go to Washington, D.C., Please go visit our monument. It is across the street from St. Matthew's Cathedral. St. Matthew's Cathedral is also important in Irish American Catholic history. And that is the site of President John F. Kennedy's funeral mass. But when you go to the monument, there is nothing there that says that who is responsible for this monument or who these 12 orders of nurse, uh, sister nurses are. It is not to walk behind the monument 
that you see that this monument was made due to the generosity and commitment of the Ladies Auxiliary of the Ancient Order of Hibernians. To me and to all of us, that should not be acceptable. The Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians are in the process of having a wayside marker made by the National Park Service to share the story of the nuns of the battlefield and our involvement in it. Thank you. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer anything. I see Gail DePolito on the call, and I have to recognize Gail and Maria Humphrey, who's also on our call. They are our two leaders in the Washington DC area to make sure that these sisters are remembered yearly with a mass and a presentation of a funeral of a flower bouquet and a short program. They are also the ones that have been on the National Park Service to make sure that that monument stays in the best physical condition. So I, I personally want to thank them and I want to personally thank them as the national president of all the work that these two individuals has done along with our sisters in the DC area. And they are the our boots on the ground to make sure that the Park Service doesn't forget us and these things, um, hopefully in 2024, we will be there as an organization. And these people, will, two individuals, for, for one thing, will be there to be highlighted for all their work, along with the sisters. We have reached out to the 12 orders of sisters that we know are in still existence. Many of them have combined. And we do have the support of the Daughters of Charity the Sisters of St. Joseph, the Sisters of Mercy, and um, the Sisters of the Holy Cross. So thank you, and I, I see some questions. Yeah, Karen, or Marilyn, it's yeah. Marianne. You have a comment from Karen Fleming that says, thank you for recognizing one of the significant contributions of our religious congregations. Um, Brianna, someone would like the bibliography on the website. I'm pretty sure we should be able to do that. Um, so your questions, your first one um, from Peggy Cornish, when will the marker be completed? We are hoping that it will be completed by the anniversary, the centennial, which would be September 20th to 24th of, 9, of 2024. We are still working with the Park Service to start the uh, actual designing of the marker. Okay, and I think that is it. All the other questions I believe were answered. Thank you. And I'm hoping that next year, when we go to the Hibernian lecture at the University of Notre Dame, that we can have a short, small group of the ladies in attendance go over to the graves of the Sisters of the Holy Cross and have some replacements. So that is my goal for next year. And our goal for 2024 is very lofty. They will have a large gathering, hopefully with the mass at um, St. Matthew's Cathedral. Also along with the monument, Ellen Ryan Jolly, had visions that she was a woman way ahead of her time. She wanted these sisters also to be remembered in the sacrifice of the mass. So she went out and petitioned our membership and women melted down their jewelry to provide funds to have a, um, a chalice made to commemorate. Thanks to Marie and Gail, I've had the opportunity to see that chalice. It is at the it's at the shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, DC. It's absolutely beautiful. It has 
the seals of all the four provinces of Ireland and a seal of St. Patrick with golden um, emeralds around, as well as on the base of the chalice, it says that this is dedicated to the sisters. They also used some of the funds to have a bishop's crozier. That's also at the shrine. Unfortunately, the shrine is, is a distance from the monument. So doing the mass at the shrine and being able to see those um, may not be possible. We're hoping that maybe we can work out an agreement with the uh, Bishop of Washington, as well as those, the Cardinal in uh, with the shrine that maybe for this important mass, they would allow those to leave the shrine. No guarantees, but if we don't ask, we'll never know if it'll happen. So that is in the um, works as well. But again, I can't tell you enough how good Gail and Maria and the DC ladies have. They have been on the forefront of remembering these nuns every year. They usually do it in May, not at the time of the dedication of the ceremony. And I think they started that because of Memorial Day. So if anyone is, is in the DC area, please reach out to your sisters in DC. And they have are more than hospitable um, to share their knowledge and keep you posted of what happens at the monument. So is there any other questions? Um, uh, someone wanted to know um, if this was, I believe it's this webinar they're talking about, Colleen, um, if you can clarify, she wanted to know if it was going to be posted anywhere. We did um, record this. We're hoping to put it on YouTube. So it'll be on our YouTube channel. And Brianna will also be putting it on our website when it's uh, completed. And again, this is our first program, Embracing Our Heritage. So second year that we're doing this. This year, we are focusing on the women of the Irish diaspora. And that's why it was important to me to start off with this offering of the sisters. And also we're hoping we had, we filmed at the convention Dolores Desch, our Freedom for All Ireland, did an interview with Kathleen Savage, one of our best advocates, a woman's advocate for peace and justice in Northern Ireland. We're hoping to roll that out in October. We also um, have eight of our sisters that are being honored as one of the top 100 influential women in the Philadelphia area. We're hoping to interview each one of them and have that as an offering. But we are open to all suggestions of how we can highlight the women, the Irish and Irish American women of the diaspora. So please reach out to me, to Brianna, or anybody on the national board that um, of your ideas. Last year, we had participation from Colorado, Maryland, Ohio, and New York. My goal is that we would have participation in every state or district where our sisters reside. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Look forward to seeing you on some of our future presentations. And thank you again. And always remember these sisters have broke down the barriers of anti-Catholicism during the American Civil War. Thank you.